Sorry, first, let me thank you and your organization for inviting me to these events. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm Massimiliano Francone, head of Global Origination at Energy Power. I would like to spend a, a couple of minutes to introduce Energy Group. They actually is one of the largest uh, global utility in the world. Before COVID, we were the second for capitalization in the world. We have presence in 35 countries and five continents. We currently manage over 85 uh, gigawatt of installed capacity. 50% of that is from renewable to produce over 200 terawatt hours. Half of that is emission free. We then manage more than 2.2 million kilometers of distributed network around the world. And we have over 70 million in Georgia for a total revenue of 80.3 uh, billion euros and the total market capitalization of 79.6. Uh, we put at the center of our business the sustainability. We adhere to six of UN sustainable development goals and we have a very long path into the sustainability and that has been uh, make us one of, recognized one of the leader uh, in sustainability from utilities and for the third year in a row we were recognized by Fortune or among the company who can change the world. Uh, briefly about our business, we have many different uh, business and they are organized into six different divisions. The first is thermal generation, so uh, produce energy from uh, conventional power plants, coal and gas. We already announced our phase out from coal by uh, 2025. And our final goal is to be totally green producer by 2050. And then our division uh, infrastructure and network to manage uh, the 2.2 million uh, uh, kilometers of uh, network with the intention to expand these uh, uh, assets. And then the retailers, uh, we have many retailers around the world selling commodities, power and gas to uh, customers in the industry and in the uh, consumer markets. And then our global trading has managed our uh, portfolio to optimize and extract more value. The new burn NLX, uh, that is a, a division taking care of the behind the meter services that includes efficiency, distributed generation, demand response and mobility infrastructure and mobility services. And then finally, energy power, that is the renewable arm, that has been uh, merged together last year with uh, uh, our thermal generation to accelerate the decarbon decarbonization process that we announced uh, uh, last year. And then coming to energy power, this is one of the leader of renewable energy in the world, presence over 30 countries, we're currently managing over 1,300 renewable plants for a total employee of 7,600. The capacity installed nowadays is 46 gigawatt, divided into the main technologies, wind, hydro, solar, and geothermal, that allow us to produce more than 100 terawatt hours of renewable energy. We have a very challenging uh, industrial growth plan, 2020-2022, we want to realize and put in place new 14.1 giga, dividing more or less 50 or 50 percent in wind and solar in many different geographies from the US, South America, Europe, Asia, and uh, um, uh, of course, uh, Italy and uh, Spain. Uh, this is a, a, a great challenge because we means that we have to do four giga this year, five next year, and five on 2022. Let's see what we did last year. We realized we built up new, it was a record for us, new three giga of capacity. Main country were US and Canada, Mexico and uh, South America. And in the meantime, we signed 4.1 giga on new contracts. Main country, US, uh, South America, and uh, there was the booming of uh, Europe as well, specifically in, in Spain. 
You can see from this picture what's happening in the market right now, that we have a huge transition from first uh, feeding tariff, then tender, and now most of our content are secured through PPA, both with commercial industrial customers and utilities. This is the new trends of the renewable, and this is the essential tools to develop, to develop new capacity. Why are customers so angry about, hungry about uh, a corporate PPA? There are three main advantages that Mr. Kajimura uh, mentioned before. First, the huge message for the sustainability. Thanks to a corporate PPA that is a long-term contract to supply renewable energy from a new renewable uh, project to an end user, the customer can claim to the market that thanks to these contracts, he allowed to build a new renewable project, giving their contribution to the uh, fight against climate change. So this is called additionality that is became essential in every sustainability strategy of our customers. The second advantage on the table for the customers are with a long-term contract, they, have, they expect, uh, of course, a, a potential cost saving. And the third is, and edging. So nobody, uh, very few buy 100% of the consumers buy a corporate PPA, normally they buy a share of that. And that means uh, an edging against the variability of the power market because a corporate PPA is not exposed to all the variables that are influencing the power market. Uh, I don't spend too much time about the difference because Mr. Kajimura did very well before me, but just for you to remember, uh, PPA on site, sleeve physical, and uh, the so-called financial contract for difference of virtual. Uh, Mr. Kajimura already explained very well the difference among the three different kind of contracts. Let's have a look on structure and risk. Uh, what is the normal volume that the customer buy? Starting from the cheapest to the most expensive. The cheapest is payer generated because we as a producer, we don't have any risk. We're gonna supply whatever we're gonna produce. And so we don't have risk in, in volume. Then there's a pay as forecast. Then the price is a bit higher because we have to include the imbalancing cost and the difference between what we produce and what we forecast. So there's a risk that we have to put on price. And then pay as contracted. This is the most common kind of contract with CNI that normally go for fixed volume monthly or base load. It means that the price raise up because we have to consider many different risks, shape risk and uh, unbalancing cost. And uh, in case of base load, maybe including uh, blending with other kind of technology. And then the last one is pay as consumed. So we follow exactly the consumption of the customers. And that, of course, is the most expensive because oh, uh, in addition to all the risks that we have to consider as well, uh, surely is needed a, 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 a blending with maybe wind, solar, and hydro. Talking about the price, the most common is fixed price. It used to be the most common, now the market is changing a lot. Um, fixed price that normally is a CPI index or can be flat, it depends on, on the agreement with the customer or variable, variable there are many different forms. Of course, a variable price comes together with a color, so a, a cap, a floor, to protect both sides, uh, the generators and the customers. And the variable price can be linked to spot price, or some tariff, or other kind of commodity as we did in the past. And then of course, there's influence on the price location. Some market has price mode, some other has price zonal, so it's something that we have to take care of. And then of course, influences for the currency, because having a presence in many different countries, currency is an issue for us. What are the risks that we have to take into consideration? First, the micro uh, risk, interest rates, exchange uh, uh, on the um, currency, CPI, and then execution risk. We normally engage ourselves with the customers to deliver energy starting from a certain date. If we get longer, we have to pay penalty, and that's a risk that we have to evaluate. And then being a contract of 10, 12, 15 and more years, we are exposed to the regulatory risk, changing law, changing tasks, of course, changing in market rules. And of course, we have to regulate into the contract how to face this in case it happens, a change in and this kind of um, issue. And then 
extremely important, the counterparty risk. We as a generator are exposed to the default of uh, our customer, as well as the customer is exposed to the default of the generators. Uh, default means a termination, a termination means recontracting the energy that we agree uh, with our customers, probably with a different price. So we have to do what we call mark-to-market -market analysis to understand how much is this risk in terms of early termination. And then a risk about the volume, renewable energy are for their nature uh, intermittent. So this is a risk that is a basic for this kind of, of, of uh, technology. And then the price associated with the volume risk, so price on shape, profile, and balancing. And then of course the risk for uh, uh, the, the kind of market, it can be a zone or nodal, the volatility of the spot, and then any, any other uh, direct cost that can be added on uh, this kind of content. So whenever we go into this encounter with a customer, that is a, a, a very long relationship because you have to consider that normal negotiation lasts between nine months and one year. First, we go for deciding what kind of price and structure and then decide what kind, of, what kind of risk will be on the generation side and what kind of risk will be on the customer side. But this is a trend that's unstoppable. Corporate PPA are increasing a lot. There's a huge change in our corporation strategy because sustainability is now center for many different reasons. First reason there are, they have customers who want to buy sustainable products. Second, all the financial institutions and bank are now lending money just or investing in company that just set targets in sustainability. And third, there's a domino effect on the supply chain. Now the first mover are ones that their supply chain are sustainable as well, because that sustainability has to include not only the, the customer, but their supply chain afterwards and downwards. Uh, so the huge movement that grew up, nowadays 800, 300 people apply to CDP for disclose their financial risk. Uh, in this in presentation, we talk about 817 company, but now they become 900 company that adhere to science-based target that have the company to set the targets and uh, uh, have them to reach the targets. And more than 220 company adhere to re uh, 100 so the company who decide to be 100% renewable by a certain dates. Uh, among all the possibility that the company has to go green, corporate PPA is the one who grew a lot in the last three, four years. You can see in the pictures, 3% uh, on the available technology were from corporate PPA in 2015. And now uh, 2018 went to 20 and 2019, we don't have the official data, but we know that we're very close to 30s. Uh, Mr. Kajimura already showed the great grow of copy PPA in the words we get to 19.5 giga secure to copy PPA. But the most interesting uh, feature is one deep by sectors. So at the beginning, there was the big tech and the food, and now all the sectors are moving to a copy PPA. Uh, the huge effect of the domino and the supply chain are already uh, uh, encourage all the other sectors to move on. So uh, pharmaceutical, chemical, financial, uh, steel, all of them now are looking for a couple of PPA with different approach. But this is a huge. Just to mention automotive, automotive now they're converting them in electrical car maker that is a sustainable product. They cannot do it if they're not sustainable from first feeding their factory with renewable energy and they cannot do, uh, and they have to feed as well the vehicle with renewable energy. And the supply chain automotive is huge that includes many different sectors. So this is a huge effect on the market. Uh, just talking about current power results, we were on the largest Till uh, uh, 2019, we signed 7.2 giga of PPA, uh, both for uh, utility and, and, C, uh, and CNI. So a total of around 90 countries signed with many different uh, countries, Australia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, Panama, Spain, US, and many different companies, big brands of different sectors, as I mentioned. So big tech, food, 
chemical, pharmaceutical, retailer. So it's a wave that are hitting the market heavily. And now uh, a focus, a deep dive on uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, we are present in focus on four market. First, Australia. We are over 275 mega in operation, 34 under construction, and we have a huge pipeline that uh, is ready to bid mostly for a corporate PPA. India, India, we signed yesterday, we were awarded the new 450 mega solar project uh, that is going to add to the 170 already in operation and the 300 under construction. Uh, India is a country that's going to go up a lot, so we are there and we have established there, so it's a, it's a target for us. And then uh, Vietnam, uh, Vietnam, we have a pipeline of around 1000 megawatt. Uh, you know that there's a, a pilot for the first. Uh, uh, direct PPA, so we're going to be part of that, and uh, we are working up on defining together with the government how to get to this goal that is extremely important for the for the country. And then uh, presence in South uh, Korea, we have a pipeline of 400 megawatts, mainly dedicated for solar action and um, attribute contracts. Uh, a final view on what we can do as a group. We are focusing on all scope one, scope two, and scope three of our customers because we have a very large portfolio among the different division. So we are now are able to provide a certification of reforestation to offsetting all the thermal uh, production of the companies. We can provide uh, services to do together with our customer, create shared value project with the local community. Of course, efficiency, demand the response, say utility bill management by NLX, utility bill management helps the customers to manage the large number of invoices. And of course, then PPA, including retail offers, so we can provide a full supply to our customer, part covered by a long-term PPA, a part covered by a short-term uh, supply of energy. It can be renewable with the adding of attributes. And then we can provide to our customer a dashboard to check and control every every second what's going on in their contracts from the copy PPA, so checking the production of the generator and checking the consumption of the of the loads, and then through NLX we can provide on-site uh, PPA on-site renewable and all the solution of e-mobility. Now we end up with some case, just to give you the many different potentiality that we have. We copy PPA. We start with a contract we signed last year We Mondelez, uh, that is a giant in uh, uh, cookies uh, manufacturing. Uh, from our project in Texas, uh, Roadrunner, that is more or less 500 megawatt solar, we uh, allocate 65 megawatt PPA to supply uh, Mondelez uh, production. Uh, and thanks to this contract, they were able to reduce. 50% uh, the uh, CO2 emission in their manufacturing activities. And the claim to the market, the thanks to this contract, 50% of the Oreo, that is the most famous cookies, are produced with renewable energy. This is another customer with different sectors, retailer gap. We supply 1,500 retail stores on the US market through a virtual contract of from our Aurora Wind Project in North Dakota, uh, 300 megawatt of project, we allocate 90 mega for a 12 years contract to supply these 1,500 um, stores. That is more or less the 50% of the store worldwide. Thanks to this contract, that we were able to cut 250,000 ton, 250, tons of CO2 per year. And then another kind of contract, we are talking about Chile. Um, we create our uh, green label, it's a couple of, uh, some years ago. At that time, there was no any IREX, they adhere at Chile adhere recently. And we supply uh, energy from our portfolio. And because there were no availability to any attributes of international scheme, we create our own uh, uh, label. Uh, making the claim reliable. So through a third party, we certify that all the energy produced from our plant has been delivered to our customer and consumed to the customer. So 
and of course we did it to make it reliable to a third party uh, that certified these activities. And then uh, uh, just to show you that from one project we can supply many different takers and many different kind of takers from uh, a Mexican Dominica wind farm in uh, Mexico, of course, 100 megawatt. We supply City Banamex, that is a, a bank branch, uh, 300 in, in Mexico. We supply Coca-Cola FEMSA, that is a factory. We supply OXO, that are um, pharmacies and convenience stores. And we supply Brush, that is a factory, from one single project. Of course, each one has been negotiated independently, and each one has its own tailor-made cost. And then uh, one most very famous for us, a uh, contact with Abby Imba, that is the, one of the largest uh, brewer in the world, very famous for Budweiser and Corona, from our Thunder Ranch wind farm in Oklahoma, that is 300 mega capacity project. We allocate 50% of this project for Abby Imba, and thanks to this contact as a virtual PPA, they were able to uh, reduce the carbon footprint of 30%. I will land with uh, a PPA in Spain. This is very interesting because it's a food supply. So BBVA is a bank, we uh, feed the branch, uh, bank branch. 30% um, under long-term PPA and 70% from retail multi-click supply, including the uh, guarantee already, so the attributes in Europe. Um, that's it. Wherever we have a retailer in the world, we are able to cover all these aspects, the full supply. So thank you for your attention. Hi, thanks, Ms. Milano, for your kind and informative address. This is highly appreciated. And now let's uh, move to the Q&A sector. Just wait me one second. Yeah. Okay, so uh, while we go through the part one prepared questions, everyone of the audience, please feel free to raise uh, the questions of use in the Q&A box while we will go through it later. So the so first questions for Ms. Uh, Ms. Nano, a typical yeah. PPA structure in Europe with respect to size tenor and the tariff side. What's your opinion? Uh, tenor in Europe is between eight to 12. Uh, about the kind of structure are very different because it depends on um, the nationality of the company. The mar Euro market is a, a, a different pace. Uh, booming in Spain, uh, we, the, the renewable are very competitive, already boom in the Nordics, and the pace instead in Italy, France, and Germany is very slow because there's the scarcity of projects right now and the competitiveness of the market uh, of the, the PPA against the um, the spot market, the global market is still to define, still to be defined. Anyway, uh, American company, for example, love uh, virtual PPA, so you can provide um, uh, a virtual contract from a plan, for example, in, in Spain to offset all the consumption in Europe. Uh, European companies prefer physical delivery. Um, the 10 are always uh, 10 to 12. So the um, success of this kind of contract depends on, on the company. So Spain, we have uh, project and competitiveness, so we can make it deal Nordic as well. Most difficult in many other countries. Another country is just extremely promising in Poland, uh, but still is under a change in the approach to the, to the Green, uh, green. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, Mr. Ms. Milano, I think you were mistouching your microphone. Can you, uh, Sarah, it's a, a little bit background noise. May you kindly check? Hold on a second. Okay. Okay, so uh, Mr. Ms. Milano, is it now? Uh, better now. Great. Uh, so, maybe, so maybe we can move to the second question. 
the transition from FIT to tender to corporate sourcing is happening in most countries of Asia. Do you believe that this transition from FIT to liberalize the market will follow Europe trend and timelines? Uh, transition from FIT to tender already happened everywhere in the world. So most of the countries are passing from FIT to tender because, uh, of course, FIT uh, need, uh, is enough to develop uh, the renewable energy. Tender is to make it comp uh, com competitive. The passage to corporate sourcing is much more complicated. It's really related to the competitiveness of the PPA in the specific market. So as I mentioned, for example, in Europe, some countries like Spain and Norway boom because they are extremely competitive against this foreign market and forward market. Some of them are still doing very high be competitive because there's a cost in the project and the competition with the today market is tough. So uh, it's a way to improve the SUV uh, of the renewable project against the forward markets of the local markets. Okay, so the so next question uh, is, would you, would you expect a new form or model to, of corporate sourcing image in the next three years? That's a very interesting question. So I, I testify what happened now in the market. So the first move, we're talking about the first move, the one the company that already in the sustainability since a long time, already buy a corporate PPA. Now they are facing two big challenges. The first is how to make sustainable uh, so supply chain. Hi, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Milano, sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can lower down the voice because the voice is still breaking. Let me try without a microphone if it works better. Yeah. Does it work better right now? Oh, it's not, it's not great. It's, made, it's already better now. Can you hear me? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, can you open your microphone then, then we can test your voice. Does it work right now? Yes. Okay, can, fine. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So I was telling, uh, it's a very interesting question because uh, I can testify what's going on in the market right now. Uh, talking about the company and the sector that are already in the sustainability uh, food or this kind of uh, sectors that already buying corporate PPA since long time. Now they are facing two main challenges. The first challenge is how to make my, the supply chain sustainable. Uh, so they are working on that because it's not an easy thing to do. They have to ask their, their supplier to do something to be sustainable. Uh, so there are now a soft invitation. I think we believe that in the future will be an obligation. If you want to work with me, you have to be sustainable. The second challenge that they are facing is the make sustainable uh, and make the carbon reduction not only for electricity part, but as well for the thermal consumption. So talking about uh, hot water, uh, steam, uh, and so on. Uh, they can do it in two ways. First, electrifying their consumption, and second, find a way to feed it with some renewable sources. Nowadays, what they are doing, they are buying certificate for forestation, uh, but of course they are the exception of uh, greenwashing. Uh, so I strongly, I believe in the future about the green hydrogen that will be the next uh, frontier, or maybe uh, biogas or biomass that of course is a niche market. Okay, understood. So the so next question, based on EGP's interaction with corporate buyers, what are the expectations from RE100 members regarding renew, uh, green uh, energy provision? Are the evolution criteria different from less uh, re-owned brands? For example, local manufacturing plants in Venice. Let's say two sides. From customer side, I don't see differences in approach from, uh, let's say, big brand and less renowned brands. It depends really on the sectors. Every sector has its own approach. I'll make you an example. A steel maker that normally has a cost of energy of 30% of the production cost, of course, are gonna have a very aggressive approach to the copy VPA, looking for a good price in the long term. Somebody, for example, in the food that the cost 
is uh, the core production is lower at a certain should they cost production, they can that will be available for a premium price. So it's not a matter of brand, it's a matter of sectors. Uh, from the point of view of the generators, of course, it can change because normally uh, large corporations, international corporations, have a fine company to guarantee to the contracts. And when we go with local company, normally uh, they are not, they don't have a, a, this umbrella. So they have to provide some um, securityness for the content. That can be a problem. Well, a small differences can be that normally the local company look for local project. May um, the opposite great corporation are open to, or as I mentioned before, maybe a virtual contrast from a specific country that supply an area. That's how the main difference be, uh, among the two uh, kind of customers. I cannot hear you, Joy. Your microphone is mute. Oh, sorry. Oh, thank you so much. Worry. Did you use the timeline limits? I don't think we, we need to go through all the questions. Or oh, maybe it's time okay. for us to move to the Q&A box. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, <laughs> so uh, may I suggest the first questions from Mr. Uh, Nam E.I. Chami? Oh, the question was for the Japan market, but I'd like to raise the same question to you. Uh, in the European market, what's the role of renewable plus energy storage system as the era of great parity? Hi, Mr. Mizumano. Is the Nicolas question you mentioned? Sorry, uh, Zoe, I, I missed no. part of your, your question. Is Nicolas Force okay. question? Uh, is the first question from the name EI Chami. The question is uh, was for the Japan market, but I'd like to raise the same question to you for the European market. What's the role of renewable energy plus energy storage system as the era of great parity? Ah, right. Uh, talking about on-site BPA, on-site uh, roof solar, eh? Yes. Uh, yeah, that is a market that is start to grow. Um, and uh, it's, it's a very com it's quite competitive for consumers, so small consuming. It's not competitive for industrial case. And we strongly believe it's gonna be competitive in a couple of years because price of energy storage battery is going down. So we are not far, we are not far to be uh, close to a business model. But there are a certain uh, development among the small consumer. First, not because the economicity, uh, sustainability economical of, of, the, of the business, but because they want to be green, of greed and uh, be part of this huge change. Okay, we understood. So the so next question is for uh, from the Nicholas. What type of PPA is the most popular with EU cu uh, customers? What are the relative uh, popularities of the four types of EU outside as the beginning? Um, so uh, leaving out the on-site PPA, it is the domain of NLX in our company. Uh, let's say that talking about, for example, American market that is our main market, we personally do 60% of our deal are financial and 40% are physical. In order to make a physical deal, you need to have in the middle a retailer, a so-called market agent. We don't have it in US, so normally we work together with other um, players to make a physical delivery through a market agent. In other countries like Europe, most of the deal would be physical uh, because uh, you know virtual is considered according to the international accounting system as a derivative and the American GAP allow the American to deal it easily than the uh, European one. So most of the European company will go with uh, direct um, physical PPA and uh, 
that of course we can do in Europe easily because we have a lot of retailers in Europe, in Italy, in Spain, in Germany, uh, in Belgium, in Netherlands. So otherwise we have to go, you have to go through another place to make the, uh, the delivery directly to the customers. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, Ms. Milano. Great presentation and appreciate again. <laughs> yeah.